Craftopia is a new open world multiplayer survival RPG hybrid from Japan that combines features and mechanics from many different genres. Boss fights, hack and slash, building, automation, mounts, gliding, farming, resource collection, and civilization advancement. This game has it all. Craftopia came to Steam Early Access on the 4th of September 2020, and despite a rocky start, is now sitting at very positive reviews. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. The Wonderful 101 Remastered is a unique action-packed superhero adventure game available to buy on Steam, Nintendo Switch, and PS4, in which you must control a team of 100 heroes united to protect the Earth from an alien invasion. Right now, this game has an incredible offer with its demo, which can be be downloaded for free, you'll get access to just over two hours of content, a hidden character called Wonder Bayonetta, and have the ability to transfer your save progress if you decide to purchase the full game. The Wonderful 101 has one of the most unique combat systems I've seen so far from an action game. Not only is playing 100 heroes at once visually unique, but you can morph these heroes together by drawing shapes to switch between weapons such as swords, whips, hammers, guns, and more. You'll also need to morph your heroes to overcome environmental puzzles too, such as building a bridge to cross a chasm, or morphing into a hand glider. But what the Wonderful 101 is really remembered for is its epic boss battles, which each have their own unique mechanics, take place in different parts of the earth, and have encounter-specific morphs you'll need to figure out if you want to succeed. Click the link in the description below to try out the demo of the Wonderful 101 Remastered now, and if you enjoy the game then you can also purchase it right now at a discounted price on Steam and Nintendo Switch. So this is Craftopia, apparently the multiplayer version of the game is still very unstable, so I'm going to jump into the single player mode and hopefully get a good idea of how fun the game is. This character on the rock here is strikingly similar to Link from The Legend of Zelda. You've got the choice of being male or female, you can be a femboy if you want. You've got these four face types, they all look fairly consistent, then you've just got this one. Angry, determined face. I don't know where the devs of this game are based, but I'm going to assume somewhere in Asia. Everything's very gender neutral in this game. Beard coming soon, face paint coming soon, type. Man, woman, unknown, not applicable. Ethnicity, human. Elf coming soon, demon coming soon. Not Link. Giant red button. You what? Okay. That's an interesting start to the game. The bloody planet's been blown up, has it? We've just spawned in the sky, and there's massive towers everywhere. What the hell is this? Some antler lady. Pretty cool stuff, though. You're right, love. Welcome, not Link. Do you remember Earth? It is the planet you destroyed. She's given me a lecture, and I'm just running around like an absolute idiot. We knew the destruction would eventually happen in the world line. Mankind raised fire, cleared the forest, developed industries. You destroyed it. Krail decided to grant another chance to mankind and to you too. Well, that's a good job. I thought I was in the sky, but this is water. That was kind of trippy. If I press shift, I can swim faster. Peon Topia. Original out of 10. I bloody love this background music. It's really making me feel relaxed. Run with shift, jump with space. Tutorial woman. Ooh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She's... <laughs> Wait, why is she taking damage over time? Have I got poisonous fists? What the fuck's going on? Brilliant. Whoa! I've destroyed the earth two minutes into my new world and I've already murdered someone. Obvious advice. A, a bit of advice was so obvious and giving you a punch. Tutorial old man number eight. If you make the altar of civilization, you can evolve the age and unlock many new things to craft. That's bloody awesome. So this game's like civilization crossed with a survival game. Fuck you, rock. Oh, we got a little chicky boy, have we? Got him. Let's fuck up some trees. Three logs to make an axe, and the axe has metal on it. Makes sense. Chopping wood. I like the animation of chopping the tree. And I like that damage numbers appear from the tree as well. Level up. Execute an evading roll. Movement plus C key. Okay. And now we can dodge roll. Craft ourselves a pickaxe. Mining rock. Make a stone workbench. Next, I can make myself a bow. Stone glider. To glide, you simply jump and jump. 
And there it is. I'm impressed so far. Fun start to the game. Now I've got a big two-handed torch. Fuck you, chicken. Ooh, we can torch the chicken and we can also torch ourselves. Altar of Civilization. So once I craft this, we can progress to the next stage of civilization. Oh shit, the sun's going down. Look at that. It's a little bit trippy. Fuck this chicken. Now I can unlock another skill. There's a bunch of different trees. Combat magic, living trick basics let's learn how to heal so with melee weapons you can jump and do an attack in the air that's really cool the combat so far seems like it might be more on the side of mmorpg action combat than traditional survival game combat kill the sheep shall we oh wow survival game with decent combat that's rare. Each of these skills can be leveled up further and further and have their effectiveness increased by the looks of it. If I want to, I can level up my heal to level two, which makes it even better. So you can be a full-blown healer, a full-blown melee DPS, ranger, mage, or you can just spec into crafting and building if you want to. It's up to you. It seems like with this system, there's a lot of possibilities for different builds and having different players with different uses. What is that? Mono. Wait. He went to Africa. Hit this guy like a baseball. <laughs> He's just gone to Zimbabwe. So this game has climbing as well. It's a little bit dodgy, but... You know, I can respect a game with climbing. I'm enjoying this a lot so far. Fuck you, chicken. You're gonna get torched, you little bastard. Ah, come on! Oh, we're out of stamina. You win today, chicken. Okay. Items put in this chest will be shipped and exchanged into cash. So in 20 seconds, the stuff that I've put here should be sold. Okay, the money just auto appears in your inventory once you've sold it at the market. Ride the updraft from a campfire to fly high into the sky. No way. Oh my god, okay, that's cool. Oh, there's a floating platform up there. If I press Z, it also gives me access to many different hotbars. So you could have one hotbar that's full of combat abilities, one that's full of building, and one that's full of magic abilities. So now we're building a sloped pathway to the island in the sky. Come on, come on, you bastard. Jump, climb. There it is, okay. Build this here, and we've made it. Warning, very strong. What do you wish for? Maximum life, mana, or stamina. What happens if you kill the god? Oh, he's just angry. He's not gonna fight back. Lots of little treasure chests around the island. Ooh, what's this? There's a little dungeon? Okay, big damage right in the fucking face. So, you do like three times more damage if you shoot an animal in the face. Watch this, and a little ding happens. There it is. Escaping trial beginner. Wow, now we've been teleported to a dungeon. There's like a hollow wall here. Okay, we found some treasure. Put the altar of civilization right here. And you set a ping on the map, like a big red beam appears. Okay, altar of civilization, calm down. Press E on the altar. And then it asks for a certain amount of resources for us to progress the age. 100 gold, a bunch of this stuff. Let's go. Age evolution. Here you can see all of the different ages. Currently the most advanced age is the industrial age. Accessory detector. Same dungeon I went to before. No, this is a different one. Dungeon of the Island. This time the dungeon's filled with monsters. Seems like bow and arrow is really OP. Sword and shield's pretty good as well. Level 9. Wow, killing these things is really good XP. This looks like the door to the boss. Oh. Oh. That needs to be dodged. Hide behind the pillar. Oh. <sighs> obvious mechanic is obvious. Dodge. Did we iframe that? We did. Okay, now we run behind the pillar. Oh, he's doing a run and a spin. He's just knocked himself out. Oh, this is how you damage him. You, like, bait him into doing that, and then you whack his core. Actual boss mechanics in a survival game. Unbelievable, Jeff. Do the jump attacks to get to the core? Like that, kind of? Big damage. Big damage. We got him. There it is, level 11. That was really fun. I don't think I've ever had this much fun in the first hour of playing a survival game before open. Now we've got a room full of treasure, a bunch of rare weapons and resources. Ooh, giant knight sword. Oh, but wait, there's more. Green sword, not bad. Day four on the island and we've already defeated our first boss. So I've spent my skill points and now I can dual wield. Look at the animations on these attacks. I've crafted myself a hoverboard. Let's take it for a ride, shall we? 
What a random thing for an early access game to add. Hoverboard, giant ass ramp. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? We go again. Come on. Yeah. We can do a trick. Wait, what? Here we go. It wasn't the result I was hoping for. Crafting a silver pickaxe so I can mine the best resources. I'm gonna gather 1,000 logs to see if weight limit is a thing in this game. It doesn't appear as though it is, and I like that. I bloody hate dealing with weight limit in survival games. Chopping two things at once. Efficiency. 1,000 logs collected. I still haven't crafted any bloody clothes. Let me do that. Here it is. An hour and a half into the game, and I've finally crafted myself an outfit. Storage chest here, let's store some stuff. Put the fields here, on the beach. So I go to the water, right click, and now I've got a bucket of water. Right click to sprinkle the field, there it is. Now we're watering the wheat field, it's a little bit fucking buggy though. Do I harvest this by punching it? Yes, and that has given me 10 wheat. I'm now placing an altar of transportation, and apparently it's gonna take me to a different island, probably bigger. Here it is. Now I've got everything to go to the next age. I'm getting a little bit lost amongst all the craftables right now. It'd be nice if there was some kind of search feature. Equip seeds and plant them. Seed. Seed. That's scuffed. I think this mission objective in the top right just goes infinitely until end game. So at this point, I'm just gonna go around and explore. So let's go to the world map. All of these different squares are places I can discover. First island I was on, island level zero, enemy level one. The next island, enemy level eight. If I go even further, enemy level 11. I wonder if these are procedurally generated. Okay, this is interesting. This zone comes with pre-built structures. I can't wait to explore this place. And I can already tell that this map is way bigger than the first island. I wish the multiplayer mode was working in this game because I could already tell this would be so damn fun to play this with a friend. If you've got friends, of course, not everyone has those. I'm bloody killed by a shaman now. Immediately, we're running into more of a challenge. I'm on fire, that's not good. God, there's so many monsters here. Okay, goblin healer just Jump off the fucking ledge. Let's just go inside the dungeon. Escaping trial beginner. So not all of the dungeons appear to have boss fights. Some of them are like puzzles or escaping trials as they're called. This is the second dungeon like this I've come across. And it's just an empty room. Perhaps I need to look up. Oh. Bitch. Double jump. Climb. Double jump. Climb. Double jump. Just like this. Nope. You can build in this game. <laughs> 10 minutes trying to platform my way up here when I can just build a fucking ramp to climb up. Build. Nope. This is surely enough stamina. The day I learned I'm shit at platforming. Come on, there it is. I can't believe it took me so long to get up here. I already made a meal of that. Dungeon clear. Whoa! Barry the bear ain't fucking around tonight. Let's go swim over to this island. Okay, I'm starting to get the hang of the climbing mechanics. Kill. Big damage. Level 15. This bloody structure makes it so hard to fucking kill this archer. Ugh. Ruins of the wild. Not only is this a Zelda style survival game, it's also a bit of an ARPG hack and slash. Dungeon Crawler. There's a lot of different elements to this game. Dual World Level 4, Dual World Level 5, and then we've maxed that out, I guess. Ooh, they do big damage. Careful of the bears. I wonder what happens when you die. I think you actually lose your stuff when you die. So we're fighting the same boss that I fought before. Here we go. Stand right here and just fucking wail away at him. GG. My inventory is completely full. Got a bloody crocodile here. Level 17. I've reorganized my island a little bit. It's functional. It looks pretty crap though, doesn't it? Something we haven't tested yet is the fishing, so let's give that a go. Press right click. Now what? Left click. And we throw a bloody giant barracuda out of the water. <laughs> what a charming game. 
Ooh, we got a yellow fish, a puffer fish. I think this game's gonna be really popular when the multiplayer portion's done. What the fuck have I just caught? There's just so many elements to the game. There's the combat, dungeons, and exploration. There's the whole cooking side, fishing, crafting, building. Feels like there's so much to discover and so much to do. I really like it. The benefit of catching fish for food is that they can also restore your mana as well as health. Go to another new island. Oh my god, what the hell have I spawned into? This is a completely different biome. What, poisoned? Fucking acid water over here. Oh, I, I can mine these crystals. So I guess different biomes gives you access to different resources. I'm assuming I can use these crystals to make gems. This is supposed to be a tree? Poisonous mushrooms. I haven't felt this feeling of excitement and wonder in a survival game since I first played Ark Survival Evolved. The poison is draining me. I need poison resistance level two or higher here. What? We are out of that zone. Let's go to the desert area. Okay, now we're in a desert and straight away, there's a bloody sandstorm. Fucking dinosaur birds interested in me. The desert map doesn't seem too large. What I'm interested in finding out is, do the different biomes have different dungeons? There's some kind of camp over there, giraffes walking around. From what I can tell so far, there's only two different variants of dungeons right now. You've got the monster dungeon. Fucking hell, am I gonna die? And you've got the puzzle dungeon. There's not a whole lot of variety yet. Jesus, I didn't even look at the monster's level. Level 22. I've killed these mobs so many times and this door's not opening because every time you hit them, they just bounce away. Really buggy, horribly designed mob, to be honest. Different boss this time? Yes, okay. What does this one <laughs> jump over that, I guess? Run away from that. I didn't expect an early access survival game to have properly designed boss fights already. I'm probably gonna fucking die from this as well. Heal. 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 Jump. Heal. Health potion. This is a really hard boss. I feel like for this one, you want to have some ranged attacks. I'll be impressed with myself if I can kill this thing. Let's put it that way. This isn't easy. God fucking damn it. My weapon's broken. Uh, better weapon, please. This one. Finish him. Oh my god, we did it. We killed a bloody level 33 boss. That took me like 20 minutes or something. That was really well designed and fun. Got some salmon, antidote. This giraffe's a friendly boy. That's... Okay. Mr. Giraffe, I'm attacking you. He doesn't give a shit, does he? We've got a merchant NPC. And as the sun rises in this harsh desert landscape, I think I'm gonna call it a day. So after dipping my toes into Craftopia for a few hours, my first impressions are as follows. I love the art style. I was impressed by the diverse range of mechanics, climbing, gliding, vehicles, building, different abilities, dodge rolling, and so on. I loved the RPG style combat and wasn't actually expecting it from this game. It seems like there's a lot of fun builds and options when it comes to the game's talent tree too. This game has actual boss mechanics, which isn't something you always see in survival style games, so that impressed me too. I love the way you unlock different islands, and after only exploring a few of them, I can tell that the world is absolutely massive in this game. The whole premise of combining the element of age advancement from the Civilization series is really clever and interesting. There's no tedious weight limit connected to the gathering aspect of this game, your only limitation is inventory space, of which you have a lot anyway. If you look at footage of the later content in this game, you can really get a sense that almost anything is possible in Craftopia. The scope of this game seems huge, and the ceiling for player creation creativity and freedom is very high. The music was really beautiful. My favourite type of video game music, relaxing anime piano. Nighttime in Craftopia looks kinda bad, the transition between day and night looks awful, and I think this has to do with the lighting. I'm sure this will be improved over time though. The crafting menu UI needs a search function, as it's a bit of a pain in the ass to navigate once you start getting a lot of unlocks. The game is still super rough around the edges, as to be expected from an early access game. The climbing mechanics feel really rough. 
you're not able to just climb normally, you climb by jumping against a wall. They should make the climbing more like Genshin Impact. In its current state, the game lacks variety in a few aspects, such as dungeon layouts, boss fights, and monsters. However, this is surely something that will change over time. I really feel like Craftopia is one of those games that need a massive amount of variety to stay fun. Overall, I think Craftopia is a game with some really amazing bones, and will eventually become an absolute banger of a game over time that will attract fans from both MMORPGs, survival and building. When the multiplayer is working smoothly, I can see this game taking off a bit and being super fun to play together with a group of friends, your other half or on your own. Definitely keep an eye on this one as it develops further. But that's it for this video guys, as always let me know your thoughts on Craftopia in the comments below, and give me suggestions for other RPG slash survival games you'd like to see me cover in the future. Shout out to Exitlag for improving my ping when I'm connecting to my online games, links to them in the description below and social media on screen. Thanks for watching, I hope you all had a successful day, and I'll see you again really soon.